Welcome to my short tutorial on copyright and ePortfolios. Let's get started. Ownership and copyright is described in the ebook, and quite simply, if a person created a piece on their own time and for their own purposes, they own that copyright. Um, copyright in the United States is implied by that simple creation without the need for a symbol, copyright symbol, or any sort of formal registration. However, the ebook does describe that if you are thinking about needing to prosecute or sue someone for uh, infringement of the copyright, then you will want to have some sort of registration on file. So in most instances for your ePortfolio, you don't need to register unless you're posting materials that you are concerned people will take and then profit from. And then I can walk you through the steps for registering your copyrights. You may have noticed that several student samples have listed a slight uh, copyright phrase at the bottom of their pages. And this is one way to deter people from taking your work. Um, it doesn't necessarily have a legal backbone, but it reminds people that this material is protected under United States copyright, that you own it, and that they need to be a little bit more aware of the ways that they want to use it. Um, it's very clear from this that it's not open for reuse by someone else. Um, and so this is sort of uh, like a giant warning sign that says, don't take it or I'll be angry. Legal ownership uh, also becomes more complicated when the work that you are sharing uh, is something that comes from an employment contract. Work that you're paid to do can either be owned by you, your employer, or any client who contracted those services through your employer. For example, my husband is an architect. So in his line of work, he has everything from sketches and drawings that help to generate ideas for the buildings that he's producing. There are computer files in AutoCAD that he makes, uh, builds himself, and then also pulls materials from uh, databases that the company he works for has. And then there are also printed documents that they give to the clients to take them to the city to get approval. And each of those different parts of the process are protected by different types of copyright. Um, to a certain extent, the client only owns the print copy. The corporation owns those um, digital files because they're built on the company software. But then the things that are, are sort of sketches um, probably have more copyright ownership by my husband because they were produced by his own hand. So the best thing to do is if you are using work from an employer is to ask for written permission uh, to use the work in any sort of online portfolio because the visibility of the web really changes things. It's one thing to print out a copy or to have something mailed to you that you say, I created this and so it's sort of gone out in the public space. It's another thing to post the full file um, on the web so that somebody could download it and then actually modify it quite easily. Um, so the best thing to do is just to start a conversation with your employer and they can guide you through any copyright issues. Fair use is a concept that's also discussed in the reading and it's really uh, defined by the answers to several questions. Really what types of materials you're planning to use and in what quantity, what your purposes are and whether or not your purposes involve some sort of profit and ultimately whether the person who initially created the piece is going to suffer any losses, especially financial losses. So that, you know, there's the quality of the work that's being taken away, the intent that you have, the value that you're going to gain from it, and the worth that somebody else sort of sees in it. And ultimately what you want to aim for when you're putting documents out on the web, uh, or when you're putting images from someone else, is you want to make sure that you are abiding by fair use policies. Now, for those of you using Weebly, the actual easiest option is to use Weebly's image search. Uh, Weebly sources images through Flickr that are tagged as creative, uh, used through Creative Commons for fair use. And I'll show you here on my particular website for this banner ad. Um, I actually went in and chose, um, we can go in and edit the image, um, and I can sort of show you, I'm going to actually exit out. Um, if I add the image and I go into the search feature, if I wanted to look for something like student instead of my typing hands, um, it, will, it will search for me. It will give me professional photos that I can buy. 
um, or I can look for free photos. And it gives you the little note down here that free photos are used via um, Creative Commons. So let's say that um, I really like this sample of students in the classroom and I want to bring that in. I would just click it, select it. I could drag it sort of where I wanted it um, and click OK. And you'll notice what happens at the bottom of the page uh, when I do this is that it adds in, in the footer, a little item and a link back to the original Flickr location where that, um, where that particular image was published. And that's super easy. If you can find it through Weebly, um, you'll get all your attributions taken care of. However, many of you are probably more familiar with using Google to search images. And you can actually get items that are uh, listed as fair use if you wanted to do an image search. So let's do the same student search. And you'll notice that I get a lot of professional looking photos at the top. And if you sort of hover over some of the um, the images you'll see the different URLs pop up and you realize that these people are, are organizations that have most likely bought these images or have taken them, them themselves. So what you can actually do is you can click the gear and do an advanced search and down at the very very bottom is a way to filter so that these images are free to use or share even commercially. Now um, your particular ePortfolio would not be considered commercial use. However, I like to always use images that are available for commercial use because that way if I ever recycle that image, say for a, a piece that I'm doing that does have potential for profit on my end, I don't have to keep track of it. Um, so I can do that. And now this particular search is labeled for commercial reuse. So let's say, as I look down through here, I really like this image. <clears throat> of students on what looks like a quad. Um, uh, if I click through, I can visit the original page. And Wikimedia is another space very similar to Creative Commons where people share these uh, images back and forth. Now, what a lot of people would do is they'd probably just download it and then try and upload it. That's not actually the best option. What you actually want to do, um, and I'll show you how to do this on Flickr as well, is to actually use the file um, via HTML code because what this is going to do is it's going to create a link back to this original page and a little hover tip attribution that says who took this photo. So again you're covering those two bases. I'm just going to go in and copy it, go back to my Weebly page and show you if I wanted to pull down some custom HTML. Go in here and paste my HTML and now you'll see that I have the image and um, there's the hover tip of where it comes from and when I actually publish this um, if I click on that image it will take me back to the original um, Wikimedia page so that's pretty awesome too. Now what I actually think is the best option is to use the search through Creative Commons which is the licensing organization for all of these um, attributions for fair use. I like the Creative Commons search because it divides it up into different types of media. So you can find images, you can find videos, you can find music if you, you know, are, are looking for some sort of background music for a presentation. Um, we'll do a Flickr search. I'll do the same search for students. And again, you can do the check boxes here if you want something used for commercial purposes. If you want to modify it, that usually happens in collage. Most of you aren't going to get to that point. So type in students and then click Flickr and it'll take just a moment to upload but you'll see that you get many of those same types of images and you know that these are able to be used by fair use. So let's say I want this sort of grungy kid studying with his long hair. Um, if I wanted to use this image I can get the HTML code from share. Um, don't just grab the link, make sure you grab the HTML code, copy that over come back into this page. I'm going to actually delete it and replace it. And you can see the students there. It's got the same hover tip and it will turn into that link. Very, very easy just from the Flickr page there. To summarize, um, 
attribution in terms of the different options that you have. Uh, if you took it or if you created it, you don't need to attribute. If you used Weebly's image search, Weebly added the attribution so you don't need to take any further action. If you found the image on Flickr or Wikimedia Commons, you can grab the HTML code which will contain that auto attribution. And there's my typo for the day. Um, if, however, you need to upload or link a photo from somewhere else because you can't get HTML code, you know it's fair use, and you really want to use it, but you really want to cover your bases, we'll go to attribution 102. Really, there are two things that you need to make sure that you are listing in your attribution. One is the name of the person who took it, and two is a link back to the original image in context on the page. Not just, not just the image that you've saved somewhere on your Facebook or an image that you've saved somewhere in a Dropbox. You actually need to show where it physically came from. Um, so most of those URLs are not going to end in .jpg. It's going to end um, in a different way and have text and, and other things on the page. The number one goal in attributing is to make sure that people can recognize that the images are obviously not yours and the original source is very obvious and connected. So I'm sure you want to know what that looks like, and I would love to show you an example of that from my Weebly page. Um, again, this was the image at the top um, of the original page, which has been used um, under that Creative Commons licensing. However, this photo, um, oh, you'll see this photo here, um, is the one that we created the hover tip. So if I click to it, notice it's going back to that uh, original Flickr page. And there's another photo here at the top that I actually uploaded. Um, and this one was through Wikimedia, but I had accidentally downloaded it, and then I, you know, I realized where it came from. Um, if I click on it, it will take me back to that original Wikimedia page. And I've added a little attribution here at the bottom that says that it's being used under Creative Commons from the user whose name happens to be Loser Boy. So again, that's why the HTML code is nice, because if it's a name that you don't really like, it's embedded down at the bottom and it doesn't really draw attention to itself. If you want to see what that looks like in my Weebly page, this is where I added that image. The two chains is the link where I can put that original image back to uh, Wikimedia Commons, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then you can use this little bubble icon to type in whatever caption that you need and just save it, and there you go. So, I do believe that you are ready to move off adding images and other types of media into your ePortfolio pages now that you understand copyright and fair use and several different search strategies. 